Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where, oh no, oh no, there's, that's not right. That's, that's not right, guys. We left, <laughs> we left the GTO in the garage, and the Hellcat had to sit outside in the sun and the heat. That is not cool, man, not cool. This is gonna be a cold start. I have yet to do a cold start on this car myself because when I bought it, it was already warmed up and then I just kind of drove it all day after that. So this is my first cold start. Oh, wow. Yeah, no issue. No issue at all. Cold start, we got almost 60 PSI of oil pressure. Oh yeah. Let the old girl warm up. Look at that interior. Man. Let's take a listen to that exhaust. Boy, she doesn't miss a beat, does she? Didn't smoke or anything. sitting in a barn for a long, long time, and now we're gonna put it on the road and try to drive it 120 miles. Let's go. All right, guys, it is that time. We are gonna get on the highway, and we're going to try to make it uh, approximately 120 miles round trip, between 100 and 120 miles round trip. What I want you guys to do right now is play along with me. Comment down below and tell me right now if you think she's going to make it or not. I have nobody behind me. I want to show you guys this. Look, there is nobody back there. All right, it is just me. Just me. <laughs> and we have no help. No help. It is just us. So we are going to, uh, we're going to do this, man. I got faith in the old girl, right? I, I think a lot of people have the misconception that older cars are more reliable than newer cars. I, just, I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> Not at all. Especially if you're running a carburetor. Um, thankfully, this has a high energy ignition and HEI, so that'll make sure we don't have any issues with points and stuff like that, but you still have a carburetor. You still have a mechanical fuel pump. Here we go. Moment of truth. Look at her go, guys. She's cruising. Check our temperature. Temperature's good. Oil pressure is like uh, almost 70 PSI. I don't even know if you can see that, but yeah, we're on the road, man. We are cruising. Let's see if we make it. Man, we're doing almost 80. <laughs> oh man, that's what I'm talking about. Good old car. Floats down the road like a boat, man. Rides like a Cadillac. So here we are stuck in traffic, of course, and I thought, you know, this is a great time to promote today's video sponsor, Ridge Wallet. That's right, Ridge has stepped up, man. They have sponsored the channel for the rest of the year, and I can't thank them enough because Ridge and companies like them that support this channel are the reason we can continue doing these cars. So big shout out, thank you to Ridge. If you haven't seen one yet, check it out. You got your money clip back here or you can get a money band. I've got the carbon fiber. They've got over 30 different styles to choose from. RFID blocking is probably my favorite feature because a lot of cards are smart cards now, right? You could just touch them to a machine and they'll read your card. Well, digital pickpocketers can use that same technology against you and steal your card's information. Believe me, guys. It happens. So I think that's probably one of my favorite features other than the fact that it's kind of like this car. It's minimalistic. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't come with all the jam-packed crap a normal wallet does. What, what am I talking about? How about a bunch of receipts? How about a bunch of key cards from, from uh, hotels or casinos that you don't even go to anymore, guys? You don't need all that stuff. It is sleek, minimalistic. It's just a wallet. 
It's an RFID blocking wallet. It's stylish and it fits nicely in, well, whatever pocket you wish. I put it in my front pocket. I call it my front pocket wallet, guys. Go check them out today, www.ridge.com slash AR and get 10% off of your order they give you free 45 days, try it. If you don't like it, send it back. They'll give you a full refund. That's right, try it. If you don't like it, they will give you a full refund. Guys, that's www.ridge.com slash AAR. Use code AAR for 10% off of your order. If nothing else, just go over there and check out their products. It goes a long way to help support the channel, even if you just go over there and look around. I truly appreciate it. Thank you again to Ridge. Now let's get on with the video. And uh, we are, in fact, standstill traffic now. We're not moving, so yeah. Let's see if we can get through this. I had to put the top up because the sun was just beating down on me and we weren't moving on the highway and it just got unbearable. So I put the top up and uh, it occurred to me, there's a couple things I really miss from modern cars. Uh, one of them is uh, the air conditioning not working in this. That's a big deal. I, I gotta get, you know me, I gotta get the air conditioning working 100%. Um, the other, I don't have a right mirror. Uh, these didn't come with them. I kinda miss having a right mirror. The radio doesn't work. Having a radio is nice. Power windows and power locks. Yeah, that would also be very nice. We don't have those either. It's a pretty bare bones, minimalistic car. In some ways, I really enjoy that. I really like taking take, taking it back like that, you know, back in the day. But uh, yeah, those are some of the luxury features I really, really miss. The steering also has a, uh, you know, not ridiculous amount of play for the year. Let me get back to my lane and I'll show you. So this is, this is the play that I have back and forth without the car actually moving. It's about like that. I don't know, what do you guys think about 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees of play? She probably needs a gearbox, that's for sure. We'll probably look into, I think the last time I did a gearbox, we went with Redline Gears. I think that's who they were. Yeah, that, that's 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 something we gotta look into also. I also notice if I try to hit it from a stop, floor it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there was, you see that? There was nothing there, nothing. Gutless from a dead stop. Why, I don't know. Could it be a carburetor issue? Maybe, uh, maybe, yeah. Another thing, I don't have a gas gauge. There's no gas gauge, so I don't know how much gas I have. That, I would like to get that fixed as well. Now, once you get going, I'll floor it, and you can hear it open up, but I don't hear the secondaries. Watch this. She moves. But I just don't hear the secondaries. Now, I could be wrong. They may be working just fine. But I would like to figure out why, uh, from a dead stop, when you floor it, it barely moves. Like, it doesn't take off at all like it should. All right. We are well on our way, guys. We are cruising. All the gauges look good. Temp is good. Oil pressure is good. Fuel? Well, we don't need to know how much gas we have. That's not important. Let's uh, hopefully make it the rest of the way there. We're almost halfway there right now. Well guys, we made it to AR headquarters and look who we got with us today. In the driver's seat, we got Santa's workshop. Trying out my new ride. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> yeah, I forgot to tell y'all this was his car. <laughs> yeah, he sent me out to go find him a new project car and uh, this is what I found for him. Do you hear the secondaries? Yep. You do? Okay. But from a dig, it just, man, she's a, she's a dog from a dig. I think this engine is rated at about 350 horsepower. It looks stock. Uh, I think uh, you need to that about half. Uh, it's not supposed to be. Well, this thing's got a front end float on it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the shocks are no good. Uh, I bottomed it out three or four times coming down here on 177. 177 or, or 102. 102. What a, yeah. That's not hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, it has no shocks. I'm pretty sure the gearbox is a little bit on the loose side. I think this is tie rods. Speed. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think it's a two speed. We'll have to get it up in the air for sure, though. I've never been here and shipped again. It's a hell of a cruiser, though. Oh, yeah. Like, I had it going 80 miles an hour on the highway, and I mean, it really does just cruise. I mean, it, it just floats. It's, but if you're looking for something with like muscle, 
especially low wind, it, it just, it ain't got it. it's not there. All right, well, you know how we do things. We've got it up on the lift, and we're gonna take a look underneath. And uh, we were really hoping to figure out what engine and transmission this thing has, but uh, Michael looked it up, and apparently all of the blocks are the same, as far as looks are concerned. Pontiac, every block is the same. Yeah, so you're not gonna be able to look at the engine and be like, oh yeah, that's a 455 or whatever, no. No, you're not gonna know. We're gonna try to find the casting numbers up top. I guess my question is, to any of you experts out there, take a look at the transmission pan on this and you tell me what you think we've got under here. Uh, is that a two-speed power glide? You know, the front of the car is right here, so we're looking at the back. All right, there is the pan. Let me see if I can get you a little bit better there. How's that? Is that a two-speed power glide? You got a vacuum modulator, Back here, you guys won't be able to see it, but above the pan on the back side here, you got a vacuum modulator. There's your speedometer cable, your speedometer drive gear right there. And uh, as you can see, true duels coming straight out of the factory manifolds. We'll take a spin around here and start going back this way. And I discovered the reason the car is so quiet. It's because of these two things right here. I don't know what those are. I think those are, uh, what do they call these? Uh, mufflers mufflers and no not like flow masters or you know pick your brand magna flow or anything these are these are like quiet mufflers they're actually designed to muffle the sound i don't know i don't know why why did they do that i don't know but uh you know take a look and what you'll see upon a little bit closer inspection is there's no rust under here none like that's one thing i could say about the car especially when you get back here to these uh these panels no rust, guys. Come over here. Look. Ugh, can I get you up there? I don't know how well you can see, but there's just no rust. Somebody took really, really good care of the whole underside of this car before, I guess, they just kind of quit working on it, and down the road it went. Look at the floor pans. I mean, just beautiful condition, leaking just a tad. It's not leaking anything severely. You'll notice there's no drips, no active drips coming off. Just a little bit of dampness as you go down the engine and transmission. So I think next what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, pull out the, uh, what do they call that, the bridge jack. We haven't used it in a while. Let's get the bridge jack out and let's get this front end up in the air. I'm just curious as to how loose <laughs> our front suspension is. Let's take a quick look at that. All right, guys, we got her up on the bridge jack now. And uh, take a look at that camera, will you? She's got a, that's, <laughs> that's wild. Now, what I was surprised about is I'm gonna sit you guys down here and I'll put a little light under here for you and get you adjusted just a little bit where you can see the suspension a little bit better. But uh, I thought the suspension on this thing was gonna just be in god awful shape. And it's, it's really not. That should lighten things up for you a little bit. Take a look as I uh, kind of rock. There is some play, but it's not awful. Up and down a little bit. I'm not sure if that's a ball joint play or yeah, if that's... that's bearing repack. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is it may just need the bearings to take care of there. But uh, yeah. So there's that side. I'll bring you over here to the other side real quick. See what you think of this one. This one's not too bad either, but it's definitely got play in it that we don't have in the other side. This one's got a little bit more. Same thing with the up and down. That's gonna be just bearing, no big deal. But uh, I think our issue with this side is probably gonna be right up here. Take a look and make sure I got you right where I want you here. All right, here we go. See if you can see anything moving there other than the entire steering. You see it? I'm aware my control arm, definitely. So not too bad. Not too bad. Honestly, it's, it's in pretty good shape. I'm willing to bet that the engine is the original engine and the transmission is probably the original transmission. I'm, I'm fairly certain that everything other than the mufflers, the exhaust, I think, has been cut. I think they just cut it and added on 
I don't know. That looks like mid pipe all the way back. All the way back? Yeah. Okay, so from the flange down, yep. they went ahead and just threw some new exhaust on. But I think everything else under here, including the shocks, is uh, is still original. That's pretty impressive. Well, I said we we're going to check the fluids, and uh, first thing I'm doing is checking the coolant. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But she's full, and she's green. Sorry for the flicker there. Uh, oil and trans fluid looks good. I did that the other day. And we fixed a couple things, although not 100% the right way. It doesn't matter, it works. That's all, that's, that's all I care about, it works. Um, we got the clock working. I was actually kind of surprised. If you look at the clock, you'll see the second hand is working. The clock is functioning, so that's good. We also have courtesy lights now. That's nice, and when you, uh, what is it? I think when you turn on the ignition, you can see the gauges down there light up. So you can actually see your, you know, oil pressure and things like that at night. That's kind of important stuff there. Um, and the dash lights work as well. So we've gotten quite a bit accomplished in a very short time. I'm happy. Now we're trying to fix the air conditioning. I'm going to uh, fire it up real quick, or maybe I should not fire it up. Maybe we should finish bypassing the heater core. <laughs> um, we're not bypassing the heater core because there's anything wrong with the heater core. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the heater core. The problem is, is we can't seem to get this car to uh, uh, turn on the air conditioning. Like the air compressor comes on, it's fully charged and it appears to be working, but it seems like it's stuck on heat. So just for now, because I'm kind of in a hurry. I got to get back to the house. I'm just going to go ahead and bypass the heater core for now. And uh, hopefully that gets the air conditioning working. <laughs> well, guys, we have uh, fixed the dash lights. We even got the lights working down here as well. The AC is blowing cold. I'm sure it'll get a lot colder as you drive, but it's blowing at about 58 degrees. Yeah, it needs to be a little colder, but uh, again, at an idle, I don't think that's too bad. The transmission fluid was about a quart and a half low, and uh, she seems good now. The rest of the fluids are all right. The oil's good, power steering fluid, power steering fluid is good. You took care of the brake fluid is a little low. Just a hair. Just a hair. That's good. So, uh, the only fluid we don't know about is the fuel. No gas gauge, so we have, we have no idea how the how the fuel is doing. You have to fill those, didn't you? I did. I filled it up yesterday. Okay. So I should have enough to get home. I mean, I don't even know. I, Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what size the tank. I have no idea. I, ho I hope I have enough. Maybe I should take one of these gas cans with me. They're full of 91 octane. That might be a... Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll throw, I'll throw a gas can in the back with me, just in case. Other than that, though, man, uh, we did verify something. The engine is a 350. Yes. Yes. It is 350. The engine code is on the back side of the engine, on the back head. Yep. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. A lot of fun. I love cameras. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if it wasn't for having a camera, we would. We, there's no way we would have figured that out. No. But it is. It's a 350, and it looks like this is probably the original engine and everything. Look, the compressor is just running her happy little heart out. It runs great, guys. It runs great. Be sure to check out Santa's workshop on YouTube. I have a link down below, and he's got some merch going on over there, too. Look Absolutely. at that. Look at that. He's got some Santa's workshop merch. You're definitely going to want to go check that out. I like that. <laughs> I need to get me one of them shirts, man. I'll wear it. I'll wear it. Okay. I guess uh, the only thing left for me to do, because I said this video was going to be us driving it 100 miles or 120 miles, is we still have to drive it home. Yep. And it made it here. And now that we've checked and verified all the fluids are, are good and full, I, I think she'll make it. But it's an old car. Anything can happen at any time. So, yeah, yeah we got to keep the suspense alive, right? I can't tell them, uh, I can't tell them, oh, it's going to make it. Now, that would be no good because then there's no reason to watch the rest of the video that's true yeah so stay tuned let's see if we make it the rest of the way home oh real quick though before i forget before we leave we have internet in the shop i don't know if i mentioned that earlier i don't think i did i don't think you did i don't think i did either but I, I got internet turned on at the house today all right through at&t and it's only 30 dollars a month so i'm not paying 750 dollars a month for internet anymore just basic internet it's uh dsl it's good enough it, it gets you it gets you internet in the shop though 
he could tell you there's never been internet in here never as soon as you step inside of this metal building cell service internet goes away yep so him and i spent i don't know what you think 30 40 45 minutes or so yeah that long yeah not that long but we ran a hard line to this router right here and that router is only i don't know i spent like 60 bucks for 160 feet of cat 5e and for the ac 1750 and we uh we ran it out of the shop oh you know i forgot to silicon it whatever I'll, I'll you know it's one of those things you know when you get something working and you're like i'll do that later <laughs> and you know years go by and uh, i've got a whole list of those yeah well this is one of those uh, even he was like you got silicon right and i was like yeah i, I do but so far <laughs> we'll we'll do it later but it runs up and it runs over here and it's nice and out of the way so as you can see we got we got hardwired internet into the shop man so we have internet out here that's a big deal now before the sun goes down i don't know if you can see that or not but the sun's starting to get a little low uh i don't want to break down at night so if we're going to break down i say let's get out of here and break down while it's still daylight out yep. and uh i'll catch up with you guys here in just a few minutes take a look at this view guys i love coming on this bridge look at that it is so beautiful out here you got the sun starting to go down over that way and then I, there's just something about the architecture i i just love driving through this bridge i don't know this is my favorite way of getting all the way down here to ar headquarters and getting home absolutely love it all right let's get on our way well ladies and gentlemen as you can see i'm home it made it with no issue at all i'm sure you all believed in it right you had faith in the old girl you knew she was going to make it home maybe a few of you was hoping it wouldn't <laughs> Maybe a lot of you was hoping it wouldn't. Hey, where is the content if it runs and drives like it's supposed to, right? I can tell you this though, we do have a problem with the car that I'm gonna have to get figured out in the very near future. Um, I feel real bad about it, but on the way to AAR headquarters, I bottomed it out twice pretty good. And on the way home, because I knew it was gonna bottom out in these certain areas, I tried real hard to not bottom it out. And unfortunately, I still bottomed it out one time and I, it was a, it, 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 it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. The car, I think it's a combination of things. The wheels are too small. This car was supposed to have 15s, if I'm not mistaken, and it's got 14s. Then on top of that, it's got tires that are too short. They're not tall enough. So it's got short tires, it's got smaller wheels, and you pair that with the fact that the shocks have not shocked in a long time. Um, and I think that's where we're getting our bottoming out from. I think if we put a new set of shocks on it, got the right size wheels and tires on it, or if I didn't want to spend the money uh, to replace these wheels, to replace these wheels with 15s is going to cost me about twelve or $1,300 for the wheels alone. The tires, man, for the, the BF Goodrich, those are probably going to run, I would guess, another 400 or so dollars just to get the tires and the wheels. So you're looking at probably with taxes, shipping and everything out the door, probably $1,800 for wheels and tires. And there's so many other things that really need to be addressed on this car, like the convertible top. It's not in bad shape, but it's not in good shape. It's deteriorating and that needs to be taken care of. Um, I don't even know how much that is. I'll have to probably call somebody to get a quote or take it somewhere to get a quote. Um, there's a lot to be done and honestly all i want to do is enjoy the car man it is a cruiser we found out that the transmission is in fact a two-speed power glide Ugh. yeah um i thought maybe there was something wrong with the car i thought maybe the carburetor was bad or something because when you stomp on her she doesn't go from a dead stop from a dead stop if you smash on the gas of this car uh, she just kind of laughs at you. It's not like it falls on its face or anything like that. It's not like it stumbles or hesitates. It just, it, there's just nothing there. There's no power there. Now, once you get her going, you can smash on it. It'll drop down a gear and, oh boy, let me tell you something. Yeah, she is a beast. Not super powerful, not super fast, but fun. 
Um, unfortunately, it looks like because the transmission only has two gears, um, yeah, uh, when you're trying to make a car that's capable of doing highway speeds and it's only got two gears, guess what that means? Low end is gonna suffer the worst, and it does. Low end, this thing is gutless. That is a shame. It's sad, but it is what it is, man. This is a cruising car, guys. That's what this car is. It's meant to be taken out and enjoyed taken on highway, uh, road trips and stuff. That's what it's for. It's not a burnout machine. It could be made into one, of course. You know, if you've got enough money and patience, you can do just about anything. I just don't know if that's the route I wanna go with this car, man. Like, I really, it. I hate to destroy something that's so original. The engine and transmission, probably rear end, all factory. And listen to this. You know, really, she's such a good car, man. Such a good car. Courtesy light is still working. You probably can't see it, but yeah, you can't see it. Dash lights are working. Generator lights on. Give it a little tap. Watch this. Every car has its quirks, man. That's this one's. Just give it a little tap of the accelerator and uh, she'll clean right up for you. Generator light goes out. I don't know what to do with it, guys. I don't. I'm so confused. Oh, yeah. If only, right? We could put a manual transmission in it. We could put the Hell the Hell Airs engine, not the Hellcat. We could put the Hell Air engine in it, right? Boy, that would be a lot of fun. Because the Hell Air engine, it get, get, gets, it does. And then that four-speed transmission in it, oh, she'll put it down. She'll put it down. But honestly, the car is just so original. I... I have a hard time bringing myself to doing that to it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Auto Auction Rebuilds. I would truly appreciate it. Share the video with your friends. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.